everybody. Welcome to another episode of Crafting with Christina. So today we are making what I'm just calling a birthday theater fold card. Um, this is the card that we're going to be making today. It's pretty super cool. It's a neat uh, idea that Taylor Expressions came up with. So this is what it looks like. And then you pull onto the sides and you've got this really cool looking interactive card. So we're going to put this guide together. I just want to show you what it looks like beforehand. So we're going to put this off to the side for a moment and I'm going to show you what um, what we're going to need. So it is your standard. Um, by the time it's all finished up, it is still the um, 4.25 by 5.5. So four and a quarter by five and a half. So it still fits in all your, it's a standard size, fits in all your regular envelopes. So things you're going to need today is um, score tape. Definitely gonna want score tape. You can use liquid glue, but you just gotta make sure that you give it time to dry um, between, but I would highly recommend using score tape. Um, you're gonna need some liquid glue as well too. I always use the Lawn Fawn, the glue tube. Um, you're gonna need uh, the 110 pound Nina white cardstock. Now you actually have a choice with this. I like the 110 pound because it's nice and thick. I found it that if I use the thicker paper, um, it went very smooth and it wasn't very wobbly, but we are gonna be doing blending. So if you're having troubles blending with this 110 pound Nina, then go ahead and use your Bristol paper or even the Vicky Booten because that stuff is nice and thick as well too. Um, so you probably, you can work with those ones just, just as well. So yeah, just in case you're having troubles, um, cause I know sometimes it's really hard to do blending on the 110 pound Nina, but it is definitely possible. And that's what I use cause I really wanted the thick stuff, but go ahead and use uh, whatever else you need. So the hammer mill cardstock, because that's what I did my coloring, um, when I did the little guys on the inside. Um, if you're using Copic markers, you want to make sure that you, you have the right piece of paper so that nothing bleeds or anything. So I use hammer mill, um, any pattern cards, cardstock you want just for decorating the front of it. It really doesn't matter. You can use whatever, whatever paper you want. Um, and the sentiment from the front of the card, you can use again whatever you want on the front there. What I used was the happy birthday. I know tailored expressions and I just realized I didn't have any. I didn't get any of the new, um, they have a bunch of sentiments that are, um, that work very well with it as well too, but any larger sentiment. So I use the waffle flower, the happy birthday sentiment from the waffle, uh, waffle flower here. So you want the Copic friendly uh, black ink. So when you're stamping out your little um, bitty border people, you want that as well. And uh, the Lawn Fawn inks that I used for the blending, um, I used Peachy Keen, Butter and Peach Fuzz. And Copic markers. So when you're doing your coloring, I did not do any blending this time. I left it very, very, very basic. So you're going to want, um, if you're going to do exactly what I did, and again, you choose whatever colors you want. There's no, nothing fancy or anything. I did not do any blending. It's just colored in everything. So I use the R24, the YR68, which is an orange, the Y18 and the Y04, just because I did the sun at a couple different colors, but I'll show you that. Um, the YG07 and the BG23. You're also going to need a Misty and a die cutting machine because there's a lot of pieces in here and a cloud stencil and I'm using the MFT rolling cloud and then of course the important parts which I just realized I didn't type on here but I'm not starting all over so <laughs> so the actual stamp and die set from tailored expressions. Um, and it's called Bitty Borders, and it has these cutest, so again, they're all red rubber stamps. They have great little sentiments, and these borders are so incredibly cute. And they also come with um, dies. So they have dies with them all as well, too. And then the most important piece we are using, let's just take this apart here so you guys can see it. And I'll show you what it looks like. So we're using the Theater Fold Frame Die. So when you're using this, all the instructions are on the back as well. Um, I am going to keep that aside because I do need to remember exactly what pieces you have to cut. But this is what it comes with. So you've got your main piece here and then you have your two little side parts that you'll see how this all goes together. So that's what we're using today. So let's just get started on the actual card um, and then we can go from there. So let's just pull this out. 
of here so there's not such a glare on it. So as I said, I am going to use the 110 pound, um, but you can use whatever you like to blend with. So first things first, if you have to read the back of this, um, so you need to cut a piece. First of all, I'm gonna start with actually cutting my 110 pound piece in half, cause it's eight and a half by 11. So if we cut this down in half, that actually gives us our five and a half that we need for at least the back piece. So we're gonna slice this piece in two and we're just gonna hold this off to the side and push to cut this piece at 4.25. So we have one piece that's 5.5 this way and 4.25. So here's your backer. This is just your standard piece you're gonna need for now. Then with your other half, what you need now is the 5.5 and you need two pieces that are four inches by 5.5. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna take this and cut them down to four. We already know it's 5.5 because we've cut the other piece in half. Now you're gonna grab your bone folder because you're gonna make some scoring lines. So you're gonna score at 2.75, so two and three quarters. Just gonna grab your bone folder, you can do it right on here. You're gonna slice that down here and you're also gonna do it at 1.25. So one and a quarter. So you're just gonna do that on both pieces. Okay, so you're gonna go 2.75. And then you're gonna move it over and do it at 1.25. So now you've got those pieces. So those are pieces you're gonna need shortly. You're actually gonna take this piece, and you, may, you can do it now or later, really doesn't matter, but you're gonna fold it on your scoring line. Take your bone folder and move it over, and then same with this. So you may as well just get them all nicely scored, and you're gonna do that so they're folding in, and you're gonna do that on your second piece as well. Okay, push this over in here. And now you've got your two pieces. So now you're gonna grab your score tape because we may as well put the whole back piece together. I like uh, when I was doing it, like you can you can do this, um, whatever you wanna do, then you can add on to this, but it's a lot easier if you put them together first and then, um, then you can decorate your whole background at the same time instead of trying to match up your clouds. So they're actually gonna be, so if you're kind of holding it this way, this is the piece that's going to be attached because this is what's gonna make your card front. So make sure that you're gonna do this um, end piece at the back here. And as I said, I like to use score tape because I know that it's gonna be sticking there forever. And I go right against the edge on one side and then right up to where the fold line is on the other. Oops. And then same with this one. So I'm gonna go right along the edge here and then right along the edge here. And then what I like to do, use my tweezers, take your end pieces off, and you can do one at a time, you can do both at the same time, but you have to make sure that you see, see so that this is gonna be attached to the back. So when you're holding them, you have to make sure that they're flipped the right way, right? Because this and this piece are gonna be attached to the edge. So if you want, you can hold them down together like this and put them down, or you can just do them one at a time. And you're just gonna make sure this is along the far edge here, so this, this piece matches. You're gonna put it down here and you're gonna center it. There's gonna be a little bit of space at the top and a little bit of space at the bottom. Okay, so you're just gonna push those down here. And now you just have to make sure that this piece here lines up with the center. So you have to push it up against there. Don't line it up with that edge piece. You can always cut this. If this is a little bit big, you can cut it off. But you have to make sure that you have this lined up with your piece here. So now you just push it down. And mine, well, you can flip it around. And if there's a little bit of extra, you can snap, you can just um, take your scissors and take it off. But now you see this is how this is going to open. So just make sure that you've pushed down on here and you push down on here. Okay, so now you've got, that's how your theater fold is gonna open. So now that we have this piece here, we may as well decorate up the inside. 
So I am going to grab my make art station from back here. Okay, put this down here. And then what you wanna do is grab, um, if you have post-it tape or like the post-it notes, because you don't really want it on the edges of these pieces. You're not really gonna see too much of them, um, but you you definitely don't want to put that down. So what I, what I was doing is just putting a post-it note along the edge here. Anything that doesn't really stick too much, right? And now what I was doing is putting down my magnets on here, so at least I know this piece is not gonna move. All right, then put another piece down here. So now you know you've got this section covered. And I'm gonna put my magnets down, oops, my magnets down on here. Because now we, what we wanna do is we wanna do this center piece. So I'm just gonna kind of pull this open so you can see how we're doing the clouds and stuff in here. So now you're just gonna grab, I'm gonna start with your yellow. And as you see, some of these pieces, like this one, um, you can kind of go off to the page. You're just gonna kind of play around with it, right? Because this um, this edge kind of, it barely reach, reaches to the edge, but it is not as imperative. It doesn't go right to the edge on here. You just kind of fake it a little bit. Unless you have a slim line, then you don't need to worry about it at all. But most of these are pretty close. So I'm gonna start with the butter. I'm gonna start with the yellow on the top. So I'm gonna go in actually probably with this one first. And then all you're gonna do is just take your, kind of start it on, especially if you're using the 110 pound, you don't wanna put a blob of yellow right on there. So start doing a circular motion on top of your stencil. And you can always add more ink. But I always like to just, and then all you're doing is when you're doing your clouds, don't go up into the paper, just go mostly on the stencil and start bringing it up a little bit on the paper because you just kind of want it around the edges here. You don't want a lot of, you don't want to bring the yellow all the way up into the white because you want just a little bit of that edge so that now you can see that cloud. And if again, you're looking at it going, oh, that's not, that's not dark enough for me, put it back on and just add a little bit more ink. Just get a little bit heavier with the ink and that will darken it up. But just keep it around to the edges of the clouds and then you're good. And you can also use darker colors, right? So I'm going to flip this around here and I'm just gonna add some more yellow into this. So we're gonna do two things of yellow. And again, you just wanna keep your, you just wanna keep it just going off the edge of the stencil. You don't wanna bring the yellow completely all the way up to your next yellow line, or you're not gonna have that cloud, that white cloud effect. Okay, so you're just gonna keep going mostly onto the stencil, circular motion, and then bringing it up onto the paper. And just nice circular motion. So now you're gonna take that off and now you've got your couple different clouds. So I'm gonna go into the orange next, which I'm gonna use peach fuzz. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna turn your stencil to wherever you want it to be. I think I'm gonna go into this one next. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some peach fuzz. Now when you're doing this, especially if there's a big space in here, you wanna add a little bit more dark, but then you do wanna just tiny little bit very lightly with your brush, kind of go up, leave this white, but you want to bring a little bit of the orange up because you don't want a big white space. Okay, so now we're just gonna add that. I'm gonna bring it up into this, very lightly into that space up top. But that's a nice part about when you're doing, using the 110 pound with this, you're starting right onto your stencil so it's not um, making big marks or anything on there, making a mess. Okay, so next I'm gonna do one more of the orange in here. And just keep adding to wherever you think is the right color for you. You can add it, you can make it darker, you can make it lighter, however you want. You just gotta make sure that you have it dark enough so that you can actually see the clouds. <laughs> So again, I'm doing a little bit lighter up here because I didn't want that completely white all the way. Okay, so now I've got two of orange and now I'm gonna bring in my peachy keen. 
And let's use, let's bring this one. Actually, let's go into this one here. Okay, so peachy keen. And I know I've already done this one with the orange. There's a little bit of orange on there, but it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna wreck it, so it's no big deal. So now you're just gonna dab, start adding more pink onto your stencil and then move it up. And as you can see, I'm going into the orange, but it's just blending into there fine. As I said, if, you, if this is driving you crazy and the 110 pound isn't working very well, try your Bristol paper, because I'm sure that's probably thick enough, or the Vicky Booten Foundation paper will be definitely thick enough. Now, you, you can use it and do another little line across the bottom here if you want, or you can just grab your pink, kind of go off, the, um, off on here a little bit, and then just dab a little bit more pink onto here, just so that it's not so stark white. A little bit on there and then as soon as you start adding your little bit of pinks and stuff in there a little bit there then it doesn't look so stark white and now you've got your clouds done so now your whole center piece here is finished for now so you can take these off and now you've got your center fold it's all done with your clouds so next thing you want to do is you want to grab, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way here for now, is move this over here. So now you want to um, grab your, your next piece. And you're going to need, um, it depends, like again, you can now do this in any pattern card stock or whatever. But what I would recommend is at least doing it um, with your 110 pound, and then I add my colored cardstock on top. I just wanted to make sure this was a very firm and it wasn't flimsy so that's falling all over the place. So let's just grab my mats here for my Gemini. So what I did here is I'm gonna put this piece on here and cut it out in white. I also wanted my things here that I'm doing in white. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. We're gonna put this on here. We can put the whole thing right on here. Now you're gonna put your 110 pound Nina on top. I'm gonna to finish my sandwich. Then I should probably wrap my Gemini on top here. So now I'm gonna put the whole thing through the machine. And yes, I have new plates, so it's gonna crack. <laughs> completely normal when you have new plates when you're starting with something new just know that is a completely normal sound <laughs> now before you get rid of your so now you're going to pull out your pieces right you're going to put these off to the side you're going to want this piece now i'm going to show you a different option i actually just use these pieces to put right back in and you're going to need these but now that you have your die cutting machine if you're doing what I did and adding a pattern paper on top, I'm just using the new um, pastel six by six from PhotoPlay. That's just what I was using. Um, and I just did the orange. But again, you can choose whatever color you want. Let's just do this one with purple. And you don't need these side pieces, but what you're gonna need is this piece back again. So you're cutting that out. So you're just gonna put this on top. Okay, move this off to the side. Just gotta make sure that you're not printing it out of this piece. So I'm just gonna shove this over to the side just so that I know I've got it all on there. Put this back down. And then I'm just gonna shove this through my Gemini. I tell you, the Gemini is the best invention ever created. I love that I don't have to hand crank anything anymore. <laughs> Okay, so now you're gonna take this out. Now don't get rid of these because these windows, you can definitely use when you're doing another theater um, fold card. So I would, I never get rid of those pieces. But all you want for now is this piece. So I'm gonna move everything else aside. Okay, so now we've got all the pieces cut. So, 
what I did with this, just to make sure it all lines up, and uh, I actually just used glue to put mine on. Normally I would use score tape, but just in case it's not perfect, at least glue is gonna give you like an extra second or so to um, move it around. So again, I'm just taking glue around the edges here, right? Put this down on top. Now you've got your piece here. So now you just wanna make sure you push this all down. And now you're just gonna keep this off to the side because you don't need it right this very second. Had a little glue come out the end here. I had, it's uh, one I haven't used in a while and it obviously globbed out a little bit more glue than I expected it to. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put this aside for now. And so these other two pieces that you had here, they have little score lines on there. So what you're gonna do is just fold them behind. Okay, and then you're just gonna use your tool here. Okay, make sure those are nicely pushed down and then same with these ones. And then in here. And then what you're gonna wanna do is pull back your piece that you just pulled out here, okay? And you're gonna grab, again, whatever you choose. If you wanna use glue, I just uh, I just put my score tape on the back of it again. So I just kind of push it and pull a little piece up. I guess this piece wanted to be added here. It's actually probably easier if you do it and just use scissors. Okay, so now I've got those pieces. And make sure they're on the inside flat because that's what's gonna be attached to them. So you're gonna push this down. Grab your scissors and make sure the score tape is pushed down well on there. And now you're gonna grab this piece. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you wanna take your score tape off the back and you just do one at a time. Oops. Okay, your score tape comes off just one piece at a time. And you're going to lay it across here, but you wanna make sure it's as close to the edge, but not over as you can. So these pieces are tucked in with your score tape and there's just gonna be a tiny little bit at the top and a tiny little bit at the bottom. So I'm gonna to try to do this without sticking my head in the way. So I can see that now I'm lined up and you can kind of just tell with your fingers and look at your head. So I'm gonna line that, push that down here and push that down here. So that's what's gonna make your brace for your, your uh, card front to go through, right? So now you can see there's a tiny little space at the top and a tiny little space at the bottom. And now this is down. So now you're gonna do the exact same thing with your second piece. Okay, I'm gonna grab this, grab this. And again, line it up as close as you can, but not over. It will, you can see it will show up um, don't freak out about that because that is normal. Plus this is gonna be covered and you're not gonna see that anyways. So again, next piece. You're just going to take your head above there, line it up towards the edge, and then push this down and push this down. And now we've got, this is where your piece is going to be um, coming into, okay? So before we start doing that piece, what you wanna do is probably, um, we're gonna decorate, get to color your center pieces here. So now you've got your center, your clouds and everything are ready. What you're gonna do is grab your bitty people and your misty. Okay, your bitty borders. And because these guys are um, foam, you wanna make sure if you're using a misty that you take your foam piece out. And then you want to grab a piece of hammer mill, which I'm going to cut down for one second here. Okay, so now you're going to stick this in here. And then if you're choosing to do the same ones as me, you're using the sunshine and the presents. So the sun and the rainbows. And then you're going to do the presents. So now you're just going to pick those up 
And you want to make sure that you're going to use, if you're going to, if you're coloring with Copics, you want to make sure you use um, alcohol marker friendly um, ink, which is why I use the Lawn Fawn Jet Black. That is definitely, I know there's a few of them out there. This is the one that I've always used. Um, and I really, I really like, there's no bleeding or anything I've ever found with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black. Again, I haven't tried a lot of the other ones either, so once I find something and I know it's great, then I just stick to it. So now you're just gonna grab your chamois and you're just gonna clean off your stamps and move those off to the side. We're just gonna put this aside for a second because now that you have your Misty, you wanna stamp the It's Your Day. So you kinda wanna move the Misty off sideways this way. And you're gonna push this down and make sure you have your clouds facing the right way. And yes, it's not going to fit perfectly. Like these are gonna go off the sides, but it's really not a big deal. If you're worried about this, put this down the side, put this down the side. And then I've grabbed, we're gonna do the same one. I've grabbed the It's Your Day. And if you can see, I put it off to the side a little bit there because I, I wanted the presents to kind of fit in between there. So you just kind of got a guesstimate of where it is. So I'm gonna say it's right about, I'm gonna put it somewhere right about, so it's almost centered, but then off to the left a little bit. So now you're gonna pick that up and then you're gonna grab, you don't have to use Lawn Fawn, you can use whatever ink you want for this. I'm gonna do it one more just so that it's super black. Okay. And again, you're just going to clean that off with your Misty. And now you're gonna put your, your bitty borders um, are done for now. So grab this guy out. Now this is ready to be, have your pieces inserted when you're finished. Okay, so right now, um, before you cut anything out, I would highly recommend doing the coloring. Now, I know this is gonna take, this is gonna be long enough as it is, so I'm not actually gonna do all the coloring, but I have shown you all the colors. And as I said, because I would show you if I did a lot of blending, but I didn't, so I'm gonna hold this up and now if you decide you wanna color them would be a good time to pause. Those are the colors again that I used. If you can't see those properly, I'm gonna hold this back up here. So those are all the Copic colors, uh, the markers and stuff that I used on here. And I'm gonna hold this up. And as I said, I didn't do any blending. You can color them however you want, but that's just what I did. And see, this is what I was talking about with the Y18, which is darker, and then the Y04, I just did the center, but everything else I used Y18. So I would say, if you wanna color them exactly the same, then pause it right now and go ahead and color. But when you're finished coloring them, I would always highly recommend coloring them first, okay? Then you're going to grab your coordinating die. I can see the presence on top, so let's just grab that, or this one, right? So once you're finished coloring it, you're going to grab the coordinating die. And then as I've shown you guys in many, many, many videos before, I would definitely use a bit of purple tape just to hold it down so that it doesn't move when you put it through your die cutting machine. So once you've got all that done and you're colored, I'm just gonna use my foam piece here so you can see it. So this is what you have now when you're finished with everything. So now you have these two die cut pieces. Okay, so we're gonna put those off to the side because we'll just add those right at the end of the card. So last piece you wanna do is, you wanna do this happy birthday part here. Okay, so now we're actually gonna put the card together. Now you can do this two different ways. I just kept the white piece that was already cut out with it. If you're finding this really tricky, then just take another piece of white cardstock and do all your stamping. And then all you have to do, since it's already gonna be one piece, just make sure, like if you're gonna do it as, as um, say you're gonna do this and you're gonna put your sentiment on there. Make sure, and again, there's YouTube videos. If you look at Tailored Expressions, when they're showing this, this is she originally did it the first time like this. So you're just gonna put your stamp down inside your Misty here. Like, let's just kind of get an idea if you're doing it this way, right? So you just wanna grab, um, actually I have to put my foam piece back in here. 
So that's because I'm, I'm just using a standard stamp here with my happy birthday. So if you're gonna grab your happy birthday stamp and you're just gonna do it on a plain sheet of paper because you don't wanna use, if you're finding the other, the way that I do it, if you find it too tricky, you can do it this way, right? So you know you wanna put your happy birthday, but what I would recommend is putting this down. Then you can kind of center your happy birthday on here and whatever else you wanna put on it because at least you know it's gonna be cutting right, but definitely use a bigger piece because as you can see, this isn't gonna fit, but this is just giving you an idea of how to do it. Then pick up your stamp then move your piece and then when you stamp it down it's going to be in the exact right spot for when you when you um, decide to cut it through here but I'm not doing it like that I'm actually going to use the two pieces that were originally cut out of this because if you do it in the misty and you line these two pieces up perfectly side by side it works just fine I can see my magnet got stuck to that <laughs> So we're going to do, I'm going to put it in like this, and I'm going to grab the happy birthday. And then I'm also going to grab the make a wish and put this on the bottom here. So I like to put this so that um, like the P in between my happy is separated and same with the make a and then the wish is on the other one, but it really, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so now that I know these pieces are all lined up in here, I'm just picking them up and I'm gonna ink them in black, but you can ink them in whatever you choose to. Okay, then I'm just gonna put this over top of those two pieces because again, they have not moved. I'm gonna ink this up a couple times because it is a thicker one here. Okay. Yeah, I think I need to do one more. I also need to get a new ink pad because this one is definitely losing its juice. I need a refill or a new one or something. Okay, much better. So now you can chamois that. I'm just gonna put it off to the side for now. Now you have your piece here. And as you can see, I just I didn't want to leave it just white on there. So these pieces, I actually just grabbed my yellow back again here. And I just took my with my brush. I just went over the edge here like this just to add a little bit more yellow to it. I just did that little bit of a yellow edge. I went a little bit heavier on the other one, but you choose whatever you like. And again, you can get into, the butter is definitely a lighter yellow. Um, you can go into a darker yellow if you choose as well too. So we've got that edged. And I don't do down the center because I still want it to look like one piece. So I just do the three edges. It gives it that little bit of a softer look instead of just a stark white piece. Okay, so now I've got that part done. So now you're going to grab this piece. You're also going to grab this piece and now you're gonna put it together. So you see how this slot is open here? You're going to slide this piece into the slot. and it's just gonna slide in here like this. Then your next slot piece, you're gonna slide this piece into here. It's a little more awkward to do it this way. But now, you've got your center pieces. I just gotta shove this guy over here so it's in the right spot. Oh, he came out, that's why. Okay. So now you're gonna center all your pieces back together here. So you're just gonna shove this up and now I've got my piece back together. So what you wanna do is once you have this down and you know that all your edges are correct here, top, bottom, sides, might have to, might have to cut a little bit off that, of that guy because he seems not, he's not perfectly centered. Now we've got this here. So what I was doing, just to make my life a little easier, I was holding it down and I was just adding a little bit of glue around the four edges 
not right up to it, but pretty close. And a little bit down the center. So then this piece, you know, because it came out of this piece anyways, is going to fit exactly in there. So you're just gonna press that down a little bit. Make sure the glue doesn't go up and over into this piece. So make sure this piece moves. <laughs> and then hold this piece down here. And you're just gonna put a little bit of glue around all the edges and down the center. And then you're just gonna pop that right back in to this center piece. Now, once you have them pressed down, as I said, make sure you move it around so that this, these edges, just in case glue comes out the edge, that they don't get caught onto your, your front piece or this is not going to work. All right, so make sure everything, once you know it's all glued, I would normally wait another minute or two, but um, so now you're just gonna open these up and now you can place, so we've got this same kind of idea, right? Now we open this up. So now you're just gonna glue all your pieces down and then you've got a finished card. So again, I'm gonna put this guy, you can kind of go in from the top wherever is easiest as well. Um, you can also take the whole thing just if it's easier to just take it back apart, right? And you can put, it's probably a lot easier than just put your piece down here and grab your presents glue those guys back up and then you're just going to put them i guess these, these ones are going to be a little bit further down because i didn't uh put the presents down first to make sure i knew where the stamp went but that's okay that still looks fantastic and then you're just going to slide this guy back in this side and that's why i said i like using this thicker paper because it uh it makes it a lot easier when you're putting it back together. So now we've got your slide in and you've got your happy birthday. So there is your newest interactive card. Pretty cool, eh? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, I'll just quickly show you some of the, uh, like I made a couple other ones as well too, just to kind of, again, play around with this. But this one, just to kind of give you an idea, I just use a stencil on the front of it. And did one like this and then I did one more that used the rainbow um, the tailored expressions rainbow stencil and I actually stenciled the inside pieces there and then stenciled the whole inside with that rainbow and used those cute little critters it's just a very neat way to do just a different interactive card so anyways hope you guys had a great time and uh, learned something a little new and we will see you guys next time bye bye